Sometimes, in patients with polycythemia with hematocrit greater than 55%, in blood coagulation studies you can observe prolongation of partial thromboplastin time and prothrombin time. It turns out this prolongation is caused by excess of citrate, which is related to the mechanics of how these coagulation studies are performed. To explain this, we have to know that when blood is collected from the patient, blood clotting will start immediately unless calcium is removed. Because recall that calcium is required for platelets activation, also for binding of vitamin K dependent coagulation factors, that this binding form of thrombinase complex that accelerates coagulation. All of this results in blood clotting. So to prevent blood clotting, calcium in the blood should be neutralized. For this purpose, we add citrate salts as sodium citrate that binds calcium ions. And this results in formation of calcium citrate complex and release of sodium ions. And in citrate calcium complex, calcium is inactive. So citrate neutralizes calcium and now we can store such blood until it will be delivered to the laboratory. And when blood is delivered to laboratory, to analyze coagulation, obviously we have to initiate coagulation. For this purpose, we simply add in laboratory our calcium to overcome citrate concentrations. So this will result in increase in free active calcium ions that will initiate coagulation. Simple as that. But recall that blood is composed of blood cells and plasma, which is the liquid component of the blood. The most abundant blood cells are by far erythrocytes. 99% of all blood cells are erythrocytes. And plasma contains fluid, proteins and ions, including calcium. And now we have to understand that when we add citrate to the blood, it acts only in the plasma compartment. And in some cases, patients have huge quantity of erythrocytes in their blood, and in this case, this will cause relative decrease in plasma volume. So for example, if we have 100 ml of blood with normal erythrocytes quantity, and same 100 ml of blood with very high erythrocytes quantity, and the relation of erythrocytes to plasma volume is described by hematocrit, in case of normal blood, let's suppose that the proportion of blood cells to plasma volume will be 45 to 55. As we know, in males, hematocrit in normal condition is 40 to 50, in females, 35 to 45. And in laboratory tests, because it's very common analysis that is performed routinely, we typically suppose that hematocrit is lower within the normal range and in most patients it is, thereby to neutralize calcium in plasma volume, and in our case plasma volume compartment is 55 milliliters, we add standard volume of citrate. And then in laboratory we add standard volume of calcium and we've got normal prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. But in case of severe erythrocytosis, the proportion of blood cells to plasma will be 60 to 40. Thereby, plasma volume compartment will be 40 ml. But routinely, we add the standard volume of citrate to bind plasma calcium. And when we add the standard volume of citrate to 40 ml of plasma instead of normal 55, in this case it simply will be too much. Yes, citrate will bind all plasma calcium, but also there will be too much of free citrate left. And when in laboratory we add calcium, this excessive citrate will bind our calcium and this will cause decrease in amount of calcium in blood sample. And without calcium, initiation of coagulation is slowed and this results in abnormally prolonged prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. And actually we had patients with polycythemia with red blood cells approximately 7.4 who had activated partial thromboplastin time 51. So basically it's not theory, it's real life. So in case of severe erythrocytosis, because plasma volume is decreased, adding of standard volume of citrate will cause relative excess of citrate anticoagulant in relation to plasma volume. This excessive citrate will bind calcium that will be added in the laboratory, and this will cause decrease in amount of calcium in blood sample. With decrease in calcium coagulation decrease, and this will manifest with artificially prolonged prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. Basically, such severe erythrocytosis can occur in patients with acute pathology as severe burns to dehydration where plasma volume decrease, or in patients with chronic disease as polycythemia vera, severe COPD or with chronic heart defects where erythrocytes quantity is abnormally